Design Thinker of the Year is awarded to Canadian corporate leaders who have incorporated design and design thinking into their organizations to achieve business objectives and drive innovation. RGD is pleased to recognize two such leaders today. The first is Brian Hill, founder and CEO of Aritzia. Since opening its first location in 1984, Brian has led the growth of Aritzia, which now operates 84 stores in North America and employs more than 2,300 staff. So I'm gonna invite Brian to come out and accept his award. Thank you, Thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of all the people that are far more creative than I am at Ritzia, we appreciate this award and recognition. Thank you. The second is Ryan Holmes, founder and CEO of Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a social media management tool for businesses and has close to 1,000 staff and more than 15 million users. Ryan, come on out and get your awards. Thank you very much. This, uh, as Brian uh, echoed, similar sentiment, absolutely an award for all of the amazing designers that uh, help create the UI and market Hootsuite every day and, and uh, do a lot of really interesting stuff. So big, uh, big congratulations to them. Thank you. So we're just going to have a little talk with uh, Brian and Ryan, and they're going to talk about how, what design, how design and its role in driving innovation and success within their organization. So uh, congratulations again. And I'll just grab the mic. Make sure this is on. It is. So, and these are open questions to both of you, and hopefully you can uh, banter back and forth. But um, so, how has design helped to build your two organizations and their brands? Well, uh, I guess you know, stepping back, Hootsuite is just about ten years old, and um, prior to that, I had an agency. I was working, uh, building you know, online interactive uh, projects, uh, websites, and and the sort, and um, we also started building apps and found pretty quickly in, in building the apps that we were building out in kind of from 2000 to 2010 um, that there were you know, a couple ways that, that design worked. We would do a kind of engineering-led app and project where our engineers would go away and build something and then the designer would kind of get handed the project and been told to put lipstick on it. Um, and, and then we flipped it and we did design-led development where we would radically prototype every click, every interaction the user would have. And uh, I'll tell you, those projects always worked way, way better. Um, it helped us get a great alignment. Um, it helped the customer see what they were going to be getting before we spent all the hours of building. And so it really became core and philosophical to Hootsuite as a company. It became one of our, our key uh, design principles and, and development principles for product that we led with design uh, for alignment with our, ourselves and our, our customers right out of the gates. Um, I think for us at Aritzia, and certainly from my perspective, I think what mattered early on was, and I felt a little aged when it said since 1984 there, but um, was an early understanding that we were in the fashion business. And it wasn't just about being in business. And quite frankly, it's not just about being in fashion for us, because if, if we're not actually a profitable business, we're not in business. And so. Um, I think it was an, a, an understanding early on that we were in the fashion business and the design made a, a big difference and um, it, it spoke to our brand, it defined who we were and it's actually what our customers are actually looking for is design from us and whether that be fashion design, graphic design, uh, architecture and interior design, whatever it may be and I think designs played a key role and I actually think that at the end of the day, when you separate and us from a lot of the people in the industry that 
sort of are at the same scale as us, I actually think it's one of our areas of specialty. And I think the teams that we've assembled are so great at it. And some of them have been there for 20, 25 years, um, helping us design and are an integral part of our success. So um, it was that recognition early on that we weren't just in business, that design, how important it was for us and, and uh, helped shape our brand, I think. And so that was made it really important early on. Um, how do you, how does your company use design to enhance your customer experience? Well, I think the, the world of software has changed over the last number of years. Uh, it used to be that um, a lot of employees working within organizations didn't really have a choice in, in terms of the software that they were given. And, um, you know, in the world of uh, install software, you'd get Microsoft Word and you'd install it. Uh, and that would be it, you'd work and work away with Microsoft Word. Uh, we live in a world where there's cloud and where there's cloud, there's options and choices. And so people can go to a number of different choices, whether with or without the blessing of IT. Um, they can pick products that they like, they can put a credit card and go, or half the time it's free. And um, that, that puts a lot of competitive forces into, uh, into products. I think also the consumerization of um, of the internet, so where everybody can go and use Facebook, and they can go and use Dropbox, and they can go and use other products that are consumer products, um, that has really forced enterprise software design to get a lot better. The competitive forces are real there, the expectations of our users are real. If they go and use Facebook and, or Instagram and they say, the usability is really good in this, why is the usability in your product not great, or why don't you do registration like this product? And so we get a ton of feedback from our customers, and um, it, is, it has really changed, I think, the industry over the past few years. I think, I think what we identify four things at Aritzia that actually our consumer sees that shapes our brand. Um, you know, our consumers don't see our IT department and they don't, they interact with it, but they don't actually see it. They don't see our HR department. They don't see our logistics department. It's all part of the package for us. But the four things that, that our consumer sees is our store design and our e-commerce experience or design and, and how they interact with that. It's our people. Um, it's our product and it's all our communications and the communications both visual and copy and things like that So I think when you actually look at those things that the consumer sees and touches and feels with the Ritzia other than the people piece There's a heavy uh, Layer of design in everything that we do and everything the consumer sees so um, whether it be the store design and and over the years and how it's evolved and, and both from a form and function perspective, whether it's the design of all our product. Um, you know, it's interesting in our business, if you design it well, um, assuming everything else has been equal to make and everything else, and you do a great job of it, you never have enough of them. And if you don't do a good job, one's too many of them. So um, it's really important that we, we have great design from that perspective as well. And then, so, and then the communications as well, and all our communications and marketing. And, and that, that goes through also onto our graphic applications on our shirts and print and pattern and things like that. So design is integrated throughout the whole organization, and it actually ends up being what the consumer ends up touching and feeling and really shapes who Aritzi is and the brand we have. Yeah, there's so many touch points to deal with today. So next question is, can you each tell us about a design-driven initiative or project that stands out to you or that you're particularly proud of? Well, uh, one that I love was, um, came, came up a couple of years ago. And um, I, actually, we have some video for it today. But it, it was uh, um, our, our mean tweets uh, campaign. And we basically, we're always monitoring what people are saying about our brand on social. And uh, we started to see a few people you know, flaring up and saying, you know, I love Hootsuite as a tool, but the UI sucks. And uh, that, that's some of the kinder words. Um, so we looked at that and, and we knew we needed to do a uh, kind of overhaul and refresh on it. And um, so we, we spent the cycles doing that. You know, sometimes you're just putting out fires. We were big, busy scaling and doing all this other stuff. And we had to get back to UI and good design. And so uh, we did just that. We spent a, a couple of uh, sprints on it. 
Uh, and then out of it came, became a, a pretty cool uh, marketing initiative. So uh, if the, the video is ready, maybe we'll play the Mean Tweets video. Hootsuite, as far as look and feel, let's say it's very Windows 95. Need a better looking UI and flow. Works great though. Just like Windows 95. Wow, Hootsuite has a truly horrible web interface. I mean, really? It's just awful. Tweet is awful. Hootsuite needs to be on Extreme Makeover UI Edition. <laughs> you know what's great about Hootsuite? Everything except the design. Looks like something my kids slapped together. Send that kid resume. Who says UI looks like crap? <laughs> okay. The problem is I agree with this. How can such a successful company have such a butt-ass ugly product? <laughs> Hootsuite is awesome. Oh, but damn, it's real ugly. Hootsuite, get with the times. UI is supposed to look good these days. Uh, so many of these. Hootsuite, f your fing UI. It's a piece of shit and it fks my personal sense of well being. I'm out. Can't, we can't use that one. Is so, those were real tweets and real designers, and, and myself at the end for a cameo. Isn't it amazing in this day of social media that you get such raw, <laughs> truthful <laughs> yeah, feedback? Yeah, unvarnished. Well, at least you know where you stand. Right? You do. Uh, yeah. That's great. What about you? Um, you know, I we as I mentioned from 1984, there's been a what lot over happen? the years. I, I think the things in design. There's nothing in particular, but I think the things in design that we're most proud of. I mean. We're in the fashion business, we're in the design business. We get inspiration from all sorts of, you know, inspiration can be used quite liberally in our business too. There's some things we've gotten inspiration of from that look almost identical to somebody else, they've done something. But I think that the, the things we're the most proud of are the ideas and the creations we've come up on ourselves. And we've been sitting in a room and we've have the, a team of people in place and we strategize on what we want to do and how we want something to look and how we can then bring that to life. And we're actually a leader in that uh, area, whether it be a graphic design, whether it be a, a, a designing a marketing tool, it be designing product or designing some issue, uh, aspects of our stores. It's things that we put together and are entirely original from our experiences and what we're going through at those points of time. Those are the things that we're most proud of. And, and then, you know, it's obvious when we're out in front of it versus we're out in front of something versus chasing something in particular. And I think from that perspective, there's been lots of those over the years. Um, a lot of people have contributed and those are the things we're probably the most proud of. Mm -hmm. Other things that we kind of get inspiration from other people, not so much. Yeah, well, it's a truly great experience walking into one of your stores. Thank you. So last question, uh, what unexpected benefits have resulted from having designers integrated into your organization? Well, we have, uh, yeah, there, there is true integration. We've got designers in our product group, obviously. We've got design and marketing. We've got, um, you know, all sorts of folks working in the design uh, world in, in our company. Um, I think we also really, you know, we talk about the signals and the, and the whiskers that we get from social and we're a social product. Social is absolutely in our DNA and we get a ton of feedback from that. I think looking at that, um, thinking about how we market through social um, has been really effective. Um, we brought, a, I brought another video and show this one as well because I think it's pretty fun. Um, but, you know, listening to societal trends, um, and thinking about how we can get clever and creative with this, how we can try to create viral content. This piece that we wanted to share with you um, had over a million views on YouTube in pretty short order. And that's pretty good for a boring software company, right? And it's hard to stand out in this, uh, this day and age. Um, and, and so this one's called uh, Game of Social. 
and uh, came out of uh, a couple of groups that were working together and, and uh, maybe we can roll that one as well. So, <laughs> thank you. So, for the one person in the audience that haven't watched Game of Thrones, that's a bit of an inspired Game of Thrones intro. Um, they w we couldn't get the music license. If we could have got the music license, it really would have been banging, but yeah. it, it was pretty close. And, but yeah, it, you know, we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, the design team put it together. You know, we, we took a, a bit of a risk on it, but it absolutely paid off, and, and uh, I think it's still pretty fresh. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand just uh, watching that video. We get distracted. But <laughs> uh, what unexpected benefits have resulted from having designers integrated into your organization? You know, I, I think what's interesting about design, um, I guess there's two things I'll talk about. One is I think we've really solved something and it's so obvious and we apply all sorts of common sense to it and get all the data points and everything like that and we think about it and we think about the solution and then the designers get involved and this might not even be a design solution, it might be some other kind of solution that we involve designers and I think over the years, you know, dozens and dozens of times and really almost only from our design community have I thought I had something and we thought we had it and there it was, plain and simple. And they come in and they talk to us and look at it and they completely change how we're looking at something. And it's just fascinating how, you know, we've been doing this as long as we have, I've been involved as long as we have, I think I know the business through and through, and yet designers walk in on a regular basis um, and change everything in the aspect of how we're looking at something. And it's fascinating to me when that happens, and I just, I just, I'm just in awe sometimes on how the designers within our teams can, can change and have a completely different perspective on, on how we should solve certain problems. And sometimes they're creative problems we're solving, but sometimes they're business problems we're solving. And one of the things that's interesting that we've done over the years, um, you know, when we started out at Aritzia, we probably had, in our office, we probably had 20 people at one point after three or four years of which five, four or five of them were designers, some fashion designers, graphic designers, store designers. And as we've grown and grown and grown, the, the amount of designers that we've had in our, in our company has, as a proportion, has shrunk, and the creative people have shrunk. And although we probably have, between graphic designers and fashion designers and store designers, we probably have maybe 50, 60 designers within Aritzia wearing different hats, print and pattern designers. Um, but as a proportion of the 2,500, 3,000 people we have, that is uh, uh, shrunk down. And, and I found over the years, probably one of my key roles as a CEO has to be protect that team because the IT people always want to get at them and the, sorry, and the, uh, <laughs> 
and, and the finance people want to get at them, and the HR people want to get at them. And in a lot of cases, our designers are creative. They go about things differently. They go about their work day. They go about their work differently. And everybody tries to get our designers sort of to fit in. And it's really important and has been important for Aritzia that we protected the designers, let them work in the methods they've wanted to work in. You know, my HR person will come to me and say, you know, Brian, we have 51 HR policies here one for every creative and then one for everybody else in the organization. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, you know, that's just the way we're going to do things here. And it's really important that, that uh, as a team and, and f to ensure our success going forward, that our creative people within the organization and all our designers within the organization are free to create what they want, have the freedom, and, and not have to deal with all the pressures of all the different things as our business gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I like that. So if only every CEO thought that way. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of successful ones do, though. Yes, yes, yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. Well, that's amazing. Um, congratulations again to both of you. Thank well you. deserved, and Thank we're you. so so glad that there are Canadian companies run by people like you that uh, value design. So thank you. Thank, right. you. thank you for thank having you us much. today. Thank, thank you very much, everybody.